do in order to get our reaction is to add that catalyst. And the catalyst is called catalase. It's in most living things. If you've ever cleaned a wound with hydrogen peroxide and you've noticed it bubbling, that's because there's catalase in your body as well. But we're not going to cut ourselves and bleed into this. So we're just going to use this water that has the yeast dissolved in it. And when we add this to the hydrogen peroxide mixture, we're going to see a reaction. So it's going to start bubbling. And I always do this on a tray because it can get quite messy. For about almost 20 years now, we've been running the on-site camps every summer. And we usually see between 1,800 and 2,000 kids over the course of the summer. And of course, this year we couldn't do it. And we have a lot of kids who come every year. They were really looking forward to it. And we wanted to give them something. So someone in, the, someone in my team, I don't even remember who now, said, what about trying it virtually? So we started going through all of the curriculum that we had already put together for the summer camp and looking at each activity and saying, could we modify this one? Could we modify that one? What's going to work virtually? And we came up with about two dozen activities and then picked among them. And we made the decision to run one camp for a variety of age levels, hoping that parents would be home to assist the younger ones if they were having trouble. And that's worked amazingly well. I think the first couple that we did, we were all shocked with how well it went and the great response that we got to it. So at that point we said, you know what, virtual camp, it's here to stay. Mission manual that has directions for each of the missions as well as the science concepts that we're covering and it does warn you if one's going to be messy so that you can prepare for that ahead of time. So that's one of our activities that we're going to do with IO. The kids loved anything to do with chemistry. This one's starting to ooze. We launch different kinds of rockets that you can launch at home with common household materials. So you know it's not like the Estes where you have to set the engine on fire or anything like that. It's all it's all either chemical or mechanical, and we have a lot of science concepts that we can present in ways that the kids are having so much fun doing it that they actually don't realize they're learning. Our position here as the education department for the visitor complex is to tell the NASA story and specifically to tell it in a way that kids can get involved with it. If you remember the old teaching adage, if you tell me, I forget. If you show me, I remember. But if you involve me, I understand. And we want to, as much as possible, involve the next generation in the space program and in the STEM activities so that they will be the space explorers of the future. And one there. And now I'm going to go halfway between them. This is why I said sometimes we do a little bit of math, but it's not, it's not a lot of math. But we're going to cut this in half. And that's actually math. I'm going to put another one there. Just about everyone I've talked to on staff, our unofficial goal is that the first people on Mars will wave and say hi to us because they went through one of our camp programs. But we've had situations like one little girl who came to the program went up to the educator ahead of time and she went, I don't like science. And at the end of the day, she went back and tapped her on the shoulder and said, I really like science now, thank you. So that kind of thing, that's what we live for. I'm gonna launch again. This time, this time I'm gonna actually aim at that pillar and see if I can hit it. No, you know what? I wanna see how far it's gonna go. So I'm gonna to try to miss the pillar and see how far I can make it go. Now I don't wanna hit it. 